because your clubs don't pitch you properly. At least now we know what segment to attack, and there's no guessing. So now let me go ahead and open up. That's a good example. Let me open up a bad kinematic sequence because it can be very visual to see um, a bad one. Let me open up one here. And then we'll go to TPI 3D. Okay, here's a great example. So let's take a look at this kinematic sequence. Now if you look at this kinematic sequence, transition actually looked pretty good. It looks like they started with their lower body first and then the truck. That's a good sign, but things go bad on this player very quick. You can see it here. All of a sudden, the trunk or the thorax starts to take over, and you can see from a left-to-right perspective, I was going in time here, you'll see that the thorax, the green line, peaks before the pelvis. Now, that's very common. A lot of golf instructors see this, and, and that that's usually creates path and plane problems, like a person who comes over the top. A person comes over the top, that, that can create all kinds of problems with ball striking. So now I've got somebody whose who's green line or the thorax is accelerating before the pelvis. That's like, for some reason on the whip, the tip of the whip just accelerated before you shook the handle. Okay, that's, that's going to be a problem. And I think it's pretty obvious to see that. And when people, when players come in and they complain of uh, consistency problems, they complain of consistency problems, they almost always have a sequence problem. Sequence problems, to me, are always primary consistency accuracy problems. So if a player is in the wrong sequence, they will tell you, sometimes the ball goes left, sometimes the ball goes right, sometimes it goes straight. If their sequence is correct, they almost always say, I know where the ball is going. I can hit my target. Now, the, the one thing that we haven't talked about yet in the last piece here is we also look at, once it peaks, we look at how fast it decelerates. This is a very strong indicator on how much speed or power they can generate. Think about the handle of the whip, and if you can imagine this in your brain, the faster you stop or stabilize that handle of the whip, the more speed you're going to crack in the whip. So the same thing goes with the kinematic sequence. If you see the, the either line not decelerating properly, like you can see it here in the green line, the green line doesn't really decelerate first. It kind of keeps accelerating. That's like if you took a handle of the whip and you just kept accelerating the handle and you never stopped it. So this does a great job. Lower body definitely stabilizes or slows down. The green one doesn't. So this person has two problems. They have a sequence problem, but they also have a deceleration or stabilization problem. Anytime you have a problem decelerating or stabilizing, it's going to affect your power. Therefore, it's hard for you to crack the whip. So this person's going to complain of two things. They're going to say, hey, I'm not sure where the ball's going, but number two is I'm going to have a hard time hitting out of my shadow. I need 30 or 40 more, more yards. And how many people come in complaining of I need more yardage, especially for the fitness and the medical guys out there? Almost every person that walks in is going to say, could you just get me 20 or 30 more yards? How easy is this? Just look at the kinematic sequence. Whichever line is still going and is not decelerating, that's the segment of their body that's robbing them of speed. So on this person, there's something wrong with their trunk. Their trunk is not only early, but it's also not decelerating. So I look at this player and I go, if I want the best bang for the buck, I've got to figure out how to make sure that the pelvis leads and the thorax needs to decelerate. If that happens, I can make this golfer more accurate and more powerful. So the more you do this, it's just like anything else, the better this gets and the better you get at doing this. But the kinematic sequence, by far, you need to own that. And I think that's where TPI 3D will help you a ton is we can actually go in, if you're not sure, you can go to analysis, you can go to report, you can take a look at your, um, you can do just a kinematic sequence one, or you can do what's called the biomechanical, biomechanics comparative report, say okay. And now what this is going to do is it'll tell you right here, there we go, downswing parameters right here, peaking order. Pelvis peaks second, thorax peaks first. Mm. Transition, like we talked about, pelvis was first, thorax was second. But when it gets to the downswing, they're out of sequence. So the computer will also make that calculation for you if you can't tell or if, there's, if it's a close uh, contest there, which is kind of a neat thing to do.